Welcome to the Hoop Threads Podcast here with another prospect spotlight with 2027 uh, Bonner Prendy, Final 15U guard, Corey Francis. Corey, how's it going, man? It's going good today. How are you? Uh, I'm doing great, man. So let's get uh, let's get right into it. You know, really enjoyed watching you play with uh, your high school team, Bonner Prendy. Um, a lot of a lot of competitive basketball. You guys are really flying around and playing hard. So really love the way that you guys play there too. Um, let's get into the warm up. So, uh, what's the best sports drink? Uh, best sports drink, probably Body Armor. Specific flavor? Uh, nah, they all they all okay. good. Okay. Yeah. PS Five, Xbox, or PC? PC for sure. Best basketball shoe and best non hooping shoe. Uh, best basketball shoe got to be Kobe's. They feel crazy on your feet. And non hoop and shoe, I'd probably say like a pair of dunks would be good. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite meal? You know, entree, appetizer, dessert, drink? Uh, high pasta, like types of pasta is good. Okay. I need, what's your favorite appetizer? Uh, probably like a couple of wings. <laughs> wings are always a good call man all right uh what's your favorite basketball environment other than kind of your home court for high school uh like i i had to play there or i could choose anyone uh yeah you had to have played there so either high school or aau i think best best environment i played in so far was probably uh, P peach jam was crazy well not peach jam uh, session one for UIBL was crazy. Like, mm -hmm. the, like when you as soon as you walked in, it was like you just felt the presence of like everything going on. Mm, the energy, yeah, the energy mm -hmm. different, and for sure. yeah, and especially like when live period started that session, like you could just see like so many coaches there. It was like crazy. It's <clears throat> exciting for sure. Um, talk about your first dunk. Tell me, tell me that story. Um. First in-game dunk, I was playing JV last year, and it was like it was a it was a preseason game. So we was playing defense. We got we got the rebound. My teammate outletted ahead, and it was like I was already like two feet in the paint. So I just went up. I didn't even take no dribbles. It was on the right side. Yeah, with one hand too. What'd you do? One hand. Well, it was one hand. Okay, a little rim grazer. <laughs> hey, you're not running grazing now i can tell you that much all right so uh let's get into the to your game uh who do you model your game after um i say i model my game after Kyrie Irving. Mm, interesting any reason why um like one i just like like all the stuff he does to prepare for his game and also like the way the way he's like he's like unguardable like he just and then he knows it, so he just used that to his advantage, and he focuses on also playing with his teammates, also and he finishing up. Nah, he's he's a special finisher for sure, and and around the basket. All right, uh, let me let me let you. I must take a step back, and you can self scout. Tell me about some of your strengths and some of the weaknesses in your game. So, I say my strengths is really playing, like playing through my teammates and playing with my teammates. Like my IQ, when I'm making certain reads and certain passes, just great. And I think finishing at the rim, it, my finishing is pretty well. Some of my, like one of my weaknesses, it has been progressing over the years is like on ball defense, but I really think I need to become a lockdown defender once I get there. Hmm. No, that's fair. I mean, from what I've seen, at least this past weekend, I think you're spot on. I think you're really physical on both ends of the floor and you're very aggressive, which is really good at your age, you know, that that you are that playing that hard, you know, because that that really is a skill in, in today's game. I think you're physical on on cutters um, and I think you can guard multiple zip positions already because you're strong um, and, and you're only going to get stronger. So I think that that's an asset for you both in, in AAU as well as high school basketball. Um I think just kind of like the shooting touch to be able to get that bump and then hit a floater in the paint going from like really fast to landing on two feet and then being able to finish with a finesse move 
just kind of harnessing that athleticism, athleticism, but also knowing, you know, to, to hit that rondo up fake and then spin back. Um, yeah. I think that's kind of the next step for you. Um, the, the catch and shoot jumper looked really good this weekend though. So um, really patient, I think with your reads too. Um, and you're not really forcing it, which is also really good at, at this young stage. Um, let's talk about your game day preparation. You're talking about Kyrie, some of the stuff that he does before games. What do you do before games? So before games, you know, like my coach, my coaches, they won't like allow you, like you don't go into games without a pregame shoot around. Like at Bonner, for example, every, every game we're in the gym the day before, hours before we, we get ball handling in, shooting, dribbling, free throws. And it's not nothing long or anything. It's just like quick hour, get your mind right get your touch right, make sure you're ready to go into the game. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now that you have a year of high school basketball under your belt, what are some differences between the high school level and the middle school level? Um, differences between the high school level is it's always, it's always way more intense. You know? When you play against – play in middle school, like, yeah, it's not, it's not that much pressure, but in high school, everything is recorded. Like, your stats, how you're looking out there, how you're playing – everything, everything is watched and everything. So you got to make sure like you're really on top of what you're doing on the court. No, wow, it's a good, good answer for sure. Um, talk about you, the difference in your role between your AAU team or high school team, or if you think that they're pretty similar. Um, no, they're different. I think at high school, like with, with such a short team we are right now, I think that like it's, it's a lot more demanding, like, you you have to be in there every play to rebound, and I think being like a leader more, I have to make sure everybody is on top of what they're doing. But AU, I feel like with Brandon being such a good coach, he already has us where we need to be, and we all know what we need to be doing right there at the right time. Extremely organized AAU team for sure, and you guys have a, a lot of horses to a lot of mouths to feed on on that on that roster for sure. Um, talk about a time that you faced adversity and some tools that you used to navigate through that time period. One time, well, we faced adversity this weekend. You know, we played three tough teams. We went we went down almost every game, but I think that using my coaches, my leadership skills, and my teammates around me, we were always able to fight back in the games and be able to, you know, uh, make sure the game was close. Okay. Tell me about your gym schedule. What are what are some parts of your game that you've been working on the most? And what do you feel like you've added since the end of the high school season? Uh gym schedule. You know, I'm always in the gym almost every day. But um days that I'm not in the game, I mean days that I'm not in the gym, you know, I'm always doing some basketball related, whether it's running in the morning, stretching, watching basketball, like that. Basketball just has to be a part of my day. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I'm working on is it's not 100, but my pull-up jump shot, I think it has to be, like, instant. Like, it has to be well because I'm playing against bigger defenders in the paint now. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. What do you do that makes you stand out for the competition, and how will you contribute to winning, you know, at the high school level and then the next level after that? So, to stand out, I just know I'm always – I'm always going to be talking, you know, whether it's on defense, on offense, in the huddles, and I'm always picking my teammates up. And to stand out, I think that me playing defense and then helping it lead to our offense is going to be big. And then the energy that it brings to the rest of the team when I when I do things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's going to help. Tell me about a, a part of your game that you feel like kind of flies under the radar or is undervalued. I have an answer for this, but I want to see what you say. I think that the most undervalued part of my game is like how well I'm able to get off my floater. Like hmm. yeah, people, I don't think people realize like floaters are a hard shot at a game when you have a defender on your hip or in front of you and you got to get different touches off. Hmm. Okay. I think it's your passing. I think you're you're a pretty good standstill passer from the wing. 
And I think you're you're starting to see some of the drop off reads to the big, either on the weak side or the strong side, throwing alley oop stuff like that. Um, I think I see a little bit more with your AAU team because you know you have a six nine big that you can throw. Yeah. To. That that definitely helps a lot. Um, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, I I enjoyed that part of your game this weekend. Uh, so what physical spots in the floor do you feel the most comfortable right now and the least comfortable? I think. The most comfortable spots on the floor that I'm gonna be in is like the two wings. Cause like there's it's like there's always a drivable gap there. Like zone, man, somebody help, I swing they swing it, I'm driving. And it makes the it puts pressure on the defense, whether I gotta pass it, shoot, anything. But one spot that I think I have to work on more and I'm least comfortable in is like being in the middle of the zone. Like when a ball gets swung to me, I have to make the right reads. When a big steps up, he don't step up, shoot it. You know, I got to make better reads in the middle. Hmm. And it's hard, too, sometimes when the defense is behind you poking the ball out, too. Yeah. All right, so rank these three from most important to least important, at least objectively. Um, game-winning assists, game-winning basket, and game-winning defensive stop. Uh, I think basket has to be number one. And okay. that feeling, feeling is crazy. But then... I think that getting a stop is also just as important. So I put that at two and then assist is like third because if someone if someone stops me from scoring a basket, I'm gonna try to get my teammate to assist. Okay. So let's kind of take it away from the court for a second and talk about what are some things that you, Corey, kind of value interpersonally on the court and off the court. Is it honesty? Is it leadership? Is it leading by example? The vocal leadership. Is it, you know, a coach that really stays in your shit to, to keep you on top of stuff or really a coach that kind of lets you go? Um, talk about some things that are important to you. I think that, like, two – it's really two things. Like, you got to really be able to, like – you got to be vocal. Like, if if something's going on, you got you to gotta be able to tell your players and what, what's happening, like, on the court, off the court. And then I think that I need, like – I like to surround myself with people who's going to push me and make me work hard. Cause if you, if you just slack enough, then I might fall into the same trap and we need to both be working hard together. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're a bit of ways from this, you know, you're, you're heading into your sophomore year here, but talk about some things that you think will eventually be important uh, when kind of picking the right college, you know, for you um, as far as, you know, playing style, as far as like what coach, um, like coaching style kind of gets the most out of you, whether it's, you know, someone that just kind of letting you cook versus, you know, being really strict, you know, really good half court offenses, really good, you know, like fast break team. What are some things that you kind of think you'll be looking for when that time comes? So I like, I like teams who are able to like operate really well in the half court offense and like teams that, once once they pass it to their their guys, they know like who to get it to in that certain moment, if that makes sense. Like mm. so to execute. Yeah, like a guard up top, right? He passed it to somebody like a scorer on the wing. Now I'm driving getting downhill and now I just gotta make the right read. Mm. And then like a, the the college part, I think like uh if I have a staff that's gonna push me hard to be where I need to get. I feel like I can get there. And also, like, a really under underappreciated part is, I think, the education part. Mm -hmm. like, I, I think the education should be pushing for, like, future future um, things that I'm going to be doing. Okay. Well, that leads perfectly into the next question. Tell me about um, if basketball didn't work out for you, you know, God forbid an injury happened, your career ended tomorrow, what, what would your plan be? Uh, that's hard for like tomorrow but I feel like I'm interested in a lot like I'm interested in other things and getting ready for other things like computers you know money management but mm -hmm. that's a hard question when it's on the line for tomorrow yeah <laughs> that's why you got to start thinking about it though um basketball is going to stop bouncing eventually um we although we hope it doesn't for quite some time uh, tell me about some of your interests and hobbies off the court. What What do you do in your spare time? Um, no, mainly hanging out with friends and family. But you know, sometimes I like to play video games. I like to just watch YouTube and watch uh, 
and watch other things. What uh what video games are you playing? Uh I play 2K, Call of Duty, and Fortnite. What team do you play with on 2K? Uh I don't know. I'll be using I'll be using the Cavs sometimes. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, tell me about some of your goals for this upcoming season. Um, so one goal I have like coming up real close is I hope we win Peace Jam. And then I hope I'm able to take that into my sophomore season with Bonner and be able to lead like bring that winning to this team also. Cause I feel like people people already think we don't have enough. And I think we could prove that we do. Okay. Uh what has been your happiest moment on a basketball court so far? Um I my happiest moment was fourth grade. I had like a half court buzzer beater. That was probably like the happiest moment I had. <laughs> okay. Uh so you know you're a Philly guy, correct? Uh from I'm from Chester, but okay. yeah, I've been spent time in the area. So what what makes your area special? What kind of sets it apart from other hotbeds across the country? Um when you when you're playing basketball in like the Philly area, you're always going to get the hardest out of somebody. Like they don't it don't matter how many offers you have, how much interest, who you're being looked at by, like they're always going to play you hard regardless of what your name is. And I feel like the environment like the crowd the student sections, they're always going to try to heckle you, whatever, to try to get in your head and make you play as worse as possible. <laughs> it's intense. Philly, yeah. Philly basketball is definitely intense, you know, on the court and in the stands for sure. All right, man, really appreciate the time. Last question I got for you. Um, what is your why? You know, why do you play the game, you know, so hard? You know, why do you work at it so much? Why is it so important to you? Kind of what is what is your why? Um. I'd rather say, like, it's for myself. Like, without basketball, I don't know. I don't know what I'd be doing, like, with the rest of my time. It literally takes up, like, half my day. But I think also for – I do it for my family and my friends. Like, how much support and how much money they put into it, like, I have to I have to just keep pushing myself to hard as I can be. Mm, got you. Really appreciate the time, Corey. Look forward to watching you. Um you know, the next couple of years and, you know, beyond that, really appreciate the time. Thank you.